For the last half a decade in places like Iraq, we have seen plenty of pictures like these. American forces and their armored vehicles designed to protect them. Some of those vehicles are now having a second life here at home. Since 1995, the Pentagon has given $4 billion worth of military equipment to local police forces. Everything from tactical gear to weapons to those mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles known as MRAPs. Warren County, New York, population 65,000 and home to Lake George, is a wintertime postcard. Peaceful, picturesque, and well-protected. This September, the Sheriff's Department took delivery of a fully armored, mine-resistant vehicle called an MRAP, the same piece of equipment used by soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan. Sean Lamery runs the emergency response team. I don't expect to see uh, insurgents with RPGs. I don't expect to see uh, roadside bombs. Our only concern is people with guns. The vehicle is unarmed. Its gun turret has been removed. But the reinforced steel doors and pressurized cab offer protection not afforded by a patrol car. I would be remiss at doing my job if I didn't prepare for the worst. But York is the Warren County Sheriff. I'm tasked with protecting the public and protecting my people. That accomplishes both of those goals at no taxpayer money. The $650,000 five mile to the gallon MRAP and this armored Humvee came free of charge through a Defense Department program that transfers surplus equipment to state and local police departments. Nearly 200 law enforcement agencies added armored vehicles to their fleets in 2013. Last November, the Boise, Idaho Police Department used its MRAP to arrest a kidnapping suspect believed to be barricaded with explosives. Warren County dispatched its armored vehicles to hostage situations twice last fall. The guy saw the armored vehicle he walks out and gives himself up. Just by looking at the vehicle? Just by, just by looking at the vehicle, he came out. He didn't, he didn't want to mess with anybody. You would be content to have that thing sit in the garage forever. I'm hoping it sits in the garage forever. I'm, ho I'm hoping we never have to use it. So is Kara Dansky, an attorney for the American Civil Liberties Union. She's uncomfortable with these vehicles designed for combat, responding to calls in small town America. To her, Military-grade equipment has no place in civilian law enforcement and says her research has shown it can actually increase violence. We've seen a number of instances in which police departments receive training that suggests that they have what we call a warrior-type mentality. They think of themselves as engaging in a battle. Why is a warrior mentality problematic in civilian law enforcement officers? We think the bottom line is that the police are here to protect and serve, not treat our neighborhoods like war zones. I don't buy that. I think that's poppycock. <laughs> you know, I think it depends on the agency, depends on the training. We're a very p professional agency here. None of my guys are ever going to be placed in danger, and that's why I, I'm glad we have it. When Sheriff York says no taxpayer money was used, Warren County did pay to have those vehicles delivered and painted, seized drug money, covered all costs.